Mm, freeze! I got a Mavic 3! <laughs> Just kidding, that's definitely not what this is for. <laughs> Although technically, I mean, actually, in a way, well, let me give you the bottom line. This is a 3D printed stubby catch slash uh, launch handle for the Mavic 3, and also kind of a landing pad, potentially. Uh, and if you understand that and you're like, okay, I get it, gimme, gimme, just wh where can I get it? Check the link down in the description below for where you can download the file, the STL file to 3D print one of these for yourself. And this is what this video is gonna be about. So uh, shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm gonna show you one that I printed using PCBWay's rapid prototyping service to print it in resin, which is cool because I don't have a resin 3D printer. So let's get started. Oh boy, we're talking about the boring drones today. You know what I mean, the DJI drones, those camera drones that just sit there and hover and they don't do cool flips and stuff. But this is what I use actually a lot of the time, way more than I ever thought that I would. Now, the thing about these drones is that a lot of times you will end up hand catching and launching the drone. That's what all the cool kids do, so why not do that? And it makes sense because a lot of times you might be needing to land on, maybe on a boat where there's nowhere to like really land it, or maybe the ground is wet or snowy or whatever. Thing is, is that it can be uh, dangerous. It is absolutely 100% more risky to your body than to just let the drone land in front of you on the ground where your hands are not anywhere close to it. Now, they're your hands catching the drone, so you get to make that risk decision if you think it's worthwhile or not. I'm pretty sure DJI does not actually like advertise catching the drone by hand, but everybody does it but it, like officially they probably like don't want you to do it, but everybody's gonna do it anyway. Most of the time, nothing bad is gonna happen, okay? But sometimes it doesn't always work like that. And then the other factor is that you have to put your fingers kind of in line with the propellers right here. You see how the propellers are right there and then you gotta kind of stick your fingers up into this area. Now, some people are gonna say, oh, well you don't actually have to do that. You can just catch it. You know, some people put their hand like this it's kind of hard to do it when this thing is on here. Uh, so some people would say either do it like this or kind of flip it around and catch it with your hand like that. Some people might even say, put your hand out like this, like, like that. I say, do not do that because now you have propellers right at face level. So what I would say is have the drone up high. You can't even see it, it's so high. And then get under it and then put your hands out and catch it like that. So you don't want to be, you don't want this thing to be at eye level. I'm getting off on a tangent here. So let me tell you a little bit more about this little handle right here. So what's cool about this is it is uh, semi-permanent. So you stick it on with 3M tape as I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna get some of this Scotch Mount Extreme. Be kind of on the side and here, there we go. That tape and just give it a little tug. We have tape on the two ends. Kind of spread these apart a little bit, putting it in place. So let's see. As far as the design of it, so we have this large cone shape right here, so that way it doesn't get in the way of this uh, bottom facing sensor right here. And then you'll notice that there's this kind of this weird cut in the cone and that's uh, so that w it won't get in the way of this back sensor as well. It seems to be working out pretty well uh, so far. Now one thing is that it does cover up part of the light, the landing light on there, um, but in my mind that's actually a good thing because what it does is it makes it so that it will light up and glow assuming you have some kind of color like translucent like this or um, or maybe just white. That is why I printed this one in uh, polycarbonate. The uh, Bamboo Lab works really, really well, and it's the lightest uh, material that I have uh, to 3D print. So this one was, I think, around 13 grams, and then the one from PCB Way was a lot heavier because it was printed in resin, and that was about 27 grams. So it was like twice as heavy. So I really like the one from PCB Way, but I'm gonna stick with this one just because it is a lot lighter. So if you were to order this from PCB Way, I would get it in the polycarbonate and try it like that. Now, in terms of actually printing this, generally we wanna keep it as light as possible. So I think on this one I did two wall loops and then maybe 10% infill, and you can kind of play around with the infill uh, 
it so that it is strong enough, but not so much that it's like heavy. And it is quite strong uh, in the, the shape that it is, um, it, but you know, it doesn't have to be super duper durable because we really want it to be as light as possible. Now, one possibility might be to print this in TPU. Now that's gonna be heavier. I haven't done it yet, but if you got like a translucent kind of TPU, that might work out really well. Potentially, this could act as a uh, kind of a shock absorber if you have a hard landing. And you might think, well, you're not gonna have a hard landing because it's gonna come down and, well, if you hand catch it, it shouldn't be a hard landing, right? You know, it's gonna automatically land. Well, there actually is potential to have a hard landing if you turn off your auto land and your uh, downward facing sensors uh, in the in the settings uh, you can basically land as fast as the drone will come down so potentially if you were to be using that feature and land it on the ground this could kind of help to take some of the impact so instead of bending the arms of the drone and having it land on the arms it would land on this part first um, and it's pretty uh, pretty much well balanced right in the middle there. But the point is if you printed it in TPU or some kind of flexible material, that may work even better. I'm not sure about how strong it would be for gripping. Speaking of that, it's very strong when you grip it uh, and with the, just a little bit of 3M tape on the uh, top pieces and on the kind of the bottom corners, um, it's, it's very strong. It's not gonna go anywhere. You can hold it upside down uh, and it like, it's not gonna fly away from you when you have it in your hand, which is really great. Once you get your hand on that, and you grab it, it's not gonna fly away from you. You know, you don't have to worry about having a good grip on it and then losing your grip, and then it flips over and then chops your neck and you're like <laughs> That would be bad. So that is what this little thing is to uh, prevent from happening. So I think it's worth it. Also, just to show you, the original uh, cover strap thing for the Mavic 3 does fit right over the stubby handle, so that's super great. And you just have to stretch it a little bit more, but it, it uh, clips on there just fine. And so far it has not been wearing out. Uh, so it's super good, super good, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Take a look at that baby right there. Now let's jump over to PCBWay.com. All right, let's put this screen away and get down to business. Gonna get down, down. Down, down business. Whoa, everything looks so crazy. Here we are on PCBWay.com. We want to do some 3D printing. So let's go on to the 3D printing tab here. Select 3D printing. And you'll see we've got this uh, drop box right here where we can just drop our files, which is super handy. We have our Mavic 3 stubby handle. Test 4 is what the, uh, what the you know, super amazing name of this one is. It's going to load up there. Quantity, that's really important because nothing will show up if you don't have a quantity. We just need one. Design units are millimeters. Now, I have looked into this and I want to go with uh, resin. And I usually do UTR 8100 transparent. But this time we're going to do UTR 81 trans 80, 80 UTR 8100 translucent. And so you can see it shows you the material description. This one is kind of uh, more of like a, a, a foggy kind of uh, hazy look or uh, or frosted look. We're going to do that. But there are a lot of other different options that you can choose from. And you'll notice that the uh, the, the quote uh, estimate price there changes as you select different items. So some of these are much more expensive, like the UTR Flex. This would be a $59 part. Uh, but we're going to go with the translucent here. And we can do some different options. I want to see about dyeing this. Now, I looked this up already uh, with the Pantone colors. I wanted to go with like a safety yellow. So uh, this is what I want to go with, Pantone 13-0630TN, uh, but they don't have that, or it's not an option on, the, on PCB Way's website. Um, but I found this image here of the different uh, Pantone codes, and so instead we're kind of going to go with more like a safety green bold. Let's go with 2297 Charlie, or C, 2297C, 2297C is where we can enter this here and we'll click submit. Okay, and I, I think that's all we have to do there. And then, um, you know, technical drawings, uh, we don't have technical drawings. We don't have any uh, threads or, or uh, holes. Uh, we don't have any inserts, blah, 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 blah. 
just super simple parts. Um, wall thickness risk taken. That lets them know that it could be designed with very thin, very thin walls and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click those. That way they won't need to contact me asking me about that if that were an issue. Product description, just gonna be other. Oh, yep, I guess so. so. We scroll back up here to the top. Our subtotal estimate is uh, $31.34. That's not bad, I'd say. And let's go to submit request. We don't have any crazy things that we're trying to print. Okay, super cool. You can create an account right here. You can log in uh, or sign in if you already have an account. All right, there we go. It's gonna take us to our account page and you'll see this order that is in here. Uh, in the blue, it says being reviewed so that uh, once they do review that, they'll get back to you uh, through email and then uh, they'll say, hey, uh, we got your order. Uh, it's, it's looking good. You know, it's ready for payment. So if you pay and then we'll start making the order and send it off to you. So if you need some rapid prototyping done, you might wanna check out pcbway.com. I'll have a link to them down in the description of this video. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring RC with Adam. PCBWay. This up. Ooh, ooh, whoa. Wow. That looks super cool though. That looks really cool. I don't know if it's really coming through on camera, but it is a nice, bright green. Let's take a little flashlight here and look at that. See how it lights up? That's super cool. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted this whole thing to light up. Check the description below this video for a link to where you can download these files uh, to 3D print your own. Of course, use at your own risk. I mean, it's been working fine for me, but your results may vary. As for the printing orientation, you'll notice that one side of the handle is completely flat, like in a straight line. That's the side that you want to print on. You wanna make sure that the handle is not just going to break off uh, at a layer line if it was printed like this way, like vertically. So we wanna print it kinda of on its side. And hey, if you have downloaded this and printed it and you have some tips or something that you can share with the rest of us, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know how it turned out for you. And that's gonna do it. Thanks for joining me, folks. I hope this uh, video was helpful to you and that you are gonna get some use out of that 3D print. If you do use it, let me know how it goes. I'd love to get some feedback from you. Thanks and have a fantastic day. Get out there, fly something, and I will see you again very soon. It would actually make sense because then you could use this as a handle uh, to film things with your Mavic. And you could be like, oh, I'm filming stuff with my Mavic. Now, I don't think the stabilization is actually very good for handheld type of stuff, but you could do it. So that's some, that may be an option. Uh, if you need to get some, some B-roll, you need to get some handheld shots. Don't mind the grass stains on here. Uh, it's just, um, just for looks.